r slash ask reddit, what's your best I didn't just dodge a bullet, but a tactical nuke story? My mom's bff had a son get out of prison, he was doing tattoos for a living. We lived in a state that still had tattoos illegal at the time, so he and his mom came to our house to give us a tattoo. I was like 18 at the time and I think he was in his early 20s. We were told he went to prison because, while he did have a drug problem at the time, he took the fall for someone carrying a duckton of meth. His mom kept hinting, and eventually outright suggesting, I let him take me on a date. She swore up and down he needed a good influence like me. I'll admit, I did feel pressured quite a bit. His mom was one of my favorite people in the world and I felt like I was letting her down. But I was not feeling it. Dude was not attractive at all. Worst of all, he was covered in swastikas. That he claimed was to survive prison. I also found it really creepy that he kept oddly stroking my foot while doing a tattoo several inches above my ankle. But, we managed to end the tattoo party with no dates made. Cool, about 3 months later, I'm listening to the news as background noise and I hear her son's name mentioned. Police are looking for him. He strangled his girlfriend and all four of her children. After the girlfriend caught him molesting one of the kids. When it's said that the other person needs someone to be a good influence. That's a huge red flag. Right away, it says the other person has some recognized shit qualities, and is unwilling or unable to make changes to their own life and you are expected to ride in and convince them to change. That or the person really has a need to have a positive influence and would benefit from such relationships. In either case, proceed with much caution. Right. That mom was desperately looking for someone to save her kid. The thing is, it's no one else's responsibility to save someone. As a parent I can understand her actions. She was looking for someone to break his bubble and he had probably walled her out from being able to affect his life in that way. I feel for the mom here. When I was 14 I went to my best friend's house for her birthday party. A 30 year old guy that worked for their parents asked her to tell me that he wanted to take me out on a date. I said I had a boyfriend. He seemed nice but he started following us everywhere and just standing back staring at us. They had a huge farm. I got nervous and called mom to come get me. Months later we saw his wanted poster at our grocery store. He was serial killer Angel Resend as the railway killer. Mum didn't believe me until it was on AMW that night and they interviewed my friend's foster parents. Then she freaked. Well, I expected a lot of shit in here but this really deserves the not a bullet but a tactical nuke award. I'm almost annoyed this is top comment because it feels pointless reading any others. Ain't nobody topping that one. I've posted this story before but when I was a young child, I was outside playing with the hose by myself. A man appeared at my fence and asked me to come over. I walked over. He leaned down and picked me up. I started kicking at him and he dropped me almost immediately, then walked away. After that I ran inside, hid in my closet and never told a single person. I had almost forgotten about it, or thought I had imagined it until years later when my mom was telling me about how they recently solved the cold case of a man who kidnapped and murdered a girl around my age at the time from our neighborhood and left her body in a field a few miles from our house. Not nearly as scary as your story, but when I was about 9, I was outside playing in front of my grandma's house. She lived next door to us. I lived in a major city, but on a side street, off a side street, off a side street. Generally only people from the neighborhood ever drove on it. This car stops in front of my grandma's house. There's a man and a woman in the car. The woman is in the passenger seat and closest to me. She rolls down her window and says something to me. But I can't quite hear her. She motions for me to come a bit closer. Something just seemed off about both of them and my gut was telling me to run. I told her she needed to speak more loudly. She said they were lost and needed directions and motioned again for me to come closer to the car. Again. My gut was screaming no. So. I said. I don't think I can help you. I'll go get my dad and I ran to my house as fast as my little legs would carry me. I told my dad what happened and when he looked out the window, they were long gone. I'm really glad I listened to my gut. I too ask 6 year olds for directions. Edit. My daughter just showed me this post shared by somebody else on TikTok right after I was telling her about another reddit post that got reshared. There were a few days where all my appliances were breaking down. 
First the clothes washer, then the air conditioner, then the dishwasher, then one morning, before leaving for work, the refrigerator stopped cooling. I was in a terrible mood on my commute to work, and then I had a flat tire in the middle of rush hour traffic. I pulled over to the shoulder. Normally I would have got out immediately and started changing it, I can change a tire in 5 minutes. It wouldn't have even made me late. But everything breaking in the days leading up to this flat had me defeated. I rested my head on the steering wheel a few seconds and said out loud why me when. Almost as an answer, I was hit from behind. Traffic has slowed because of my pulling over, and an ambulance driver transporting a patient between hospitals decided to go around the traffic by driving in the breakdown lane. Damage to my vehicle was minor, but if it had been any other day I would have been taking my jack and spare out at that moment and been crushed between my car and the ambulance. Everything worked out great. I got a 5 figure settlement from the ambulance company as they were clearly at fault hitting a car in the breakdown lane. It was a non-emergency transportation of a patient, and when I got home that day, all the appliances were miraculously working again. Your guardian angel is a gremlin. That right there's a decent writing prompt. A boy I dated ghosted me, was a bit shit but okay. Two years later, saw his picture in the newspaper, he had been done for raping underage girls. Yikes. Jesus Christ I'd forever be glad to be ghosted in future. That is a good point. I'm no longer sad when people stop texting me now ha ha. I was once the last person to cross a bridge before it fell. Looked in my rear view to see what the noise was to see open air where there should have been road. And some white faced people who were just about to cross as well. This is my biggest fear. Up uh, where? I used to hook up with guys on Craigslist. I was going through a really self-destructive phase of my life and that's really all I have to say about that. I was supposed to meet up with this one guy. I was on the way to his motel room when I get a text from him. Clearly an accident and meant for someone else. It was a picture of me and it said something like got a new toy for us this week. I don't know who it was for but we were only supposed to hook up that night and then I was leaving. That's not just a tactical nuke. That's a large asteroid wiping out the dinosaurs. The chick chick up. Not me but my godfather. He worked in the second tower that was hit on 9-11. Luckily he had car trouble that morning and had to take his car into the shop. I heard a story on TikTok about a boy who was born on 9-11 slash 2001. His father worked on the 99th floor of one of the towers. But missed work that day because his son was born. Is it possible for him to have a happy birthday? I was bullied pretty badly in middle school by this one kid. Before I could finish 7th grade, my parents and I moved to another state. On my last day in middle school, the kid who bullied me was unusually nice to me. Found out after my last day in middle school in that town that my bully beat a teacher with a metal baseball bat. Apparently he was gunning for me, and got frustrated that I didn't show up and decided to just take it out on a teacher. Last I heard, he went to juvie for that. Why was he nice to you a day before? I wonder. Probably planned on caving my brains in the day after. I had a two friends that were going to score some meth. I almost went with them to get dropped off home on their way back. They were both killed, robbed, and set on fire. Holy shit dude. I'm really sorry about your friends. That's awful. THX. Don't get into street meth. Never seen it end well. Not me, but my mom one day. A male co-worker of hers asked her on a date. She was friends with him and liked him well enough. But she had a boyfriend at the time so she politely turned him down. He took it like a champ and jokingly said ah, you should dump that guy, I'll treat you much better. Less than a year later, he was arrested for murdering his ex-wife with an axe because she wouldn't let him borrow her car. He didn't seem to take the ex-wife like a champ. The amount of people in this thread dodging rape and then being murdered is alarming. Scary to think about how many more people would be here to comment if they had simply made one choice differently. I made friends with an older guy, mid 20s, when I was 15. He seemed kinda lonely but otherwise harmless. Probably should have recognized that a grown man being friends with a teenage girl was weird. But I was naive and very trusting. He started trying to flirt with me and eventually made some rape threats. At which point I cut off contact and basically told him to get ducked. 
He was arrested a year later for child porn and indecent liberties with a minor. Can't say it was much of a surprise, but I'm still so relieved that I cut contact when I did. Good for you. You had the guts to get away at the right time. Did your parents friends knew? People who could have told you it was not normal? Thanks. I was really sheltered growing up so I didn't see the red flags at first, and never bothered to tell my parents because they would have gone ballistic. For good reason, of course. But as a teenager I didn't want to deal with the drama. In hindsight I definitely ignored some early warning signs because I felt so special and mature to have an older friend. But I'm really lucky that I managed to get myself out of that situation before anything bad happened. I met this one guy as a young adult. He was a mutual in my friend group. Thought he was cute. Gave him my social media info and we chatted back and forth for a little bit. I moved away from the area not long after we met. After I moved he messaged me constantly asking me to come over to his house. Attend parties with him. Come to his area so he could buy me a drink. So on and so forth. I politely declined every time. This went on for literally a year. Eventually I entered into a committed relationship. Shortly after he asked if I had a boyfriend, I said yes, and he proceeded to send me a bunch of pictures of his wiener. I instantly blocked him. Two years later, through our mutual friends, I found out that he had been accused of drugging and raping several women. When police came to his house to arrest him, they found a woman in a dog kennel in his living room. Not sure the entire story behind the girl in the kennel but just thinking about it freaks me out. Edit. Okay. I wasn't expecting this to blow up like it did. I asked one of my friends for more details. Apparently he is also being accused of trafficking women. And the girl in the kennel was one of his victims. He is currently in jail awaiting trial. Praying that justice is served. Reminds me of a guy I recently went on a date with. He seemed antisocial. Sociopathic. His house was clinically clean, cold, lifeless and dead feeling, like nobody actually lived there. He joked that he kept bodies in his freezer. He made excuses for strange marks on the wall saying he was letting other people stay in his home for weeks for free and he hadn't been there for some time. He said he took off work to thoroughly scrub down his house for my visit but he missed a few spots which looked like long scuff marks from the bottom of shoes but at eye level, blaming them on his guests. He pushed me to move in with him when he was showing me his place. Offered me to live there for free. He kept saying I'm trying not to be pushy with you and gestured at the physical distance between us. Strong rappy vibes. After the second date he sent me CC footage from his home security camera of him walking me to my car and said he misses me and keeps watching that moment back. I blocked him. He contacted me on an unknown number a few weeks later and told me he wasn't giving up. I blocked again. He said he was buying the town home across the street to have it rented out. I'm starting to wonder if I should have the police check it at some point. Im I go with yes. Definitely. Better safe than sorry. In November 2019, while working in China, I asked my employer when we would be taking spring festival winter break in 2020, so I could book a flight ticket. Bizarrely, none of my co-workers wanted to give me an exact date claiming they didn't know when the term ended. I was an English teacher, at a private boarding school, in Wuhan. For some reason, they didn't want to say, it was like nobody wanted to take responsibility for me. So I decided to ignore their stupidity and just picked a date to book a ticket. As it turns out it was a date a day or so after term had ended. But, they still shut the power down in the campus because nobody told security I was still there. Managed to get hold of someone so I wasn't locked in. Following. Morning get a taxi to the airport. Get to Tokyo. Hang out with a friend. Wooen gets locked down. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.